still looks out for us and uh you know we're looking for um you know there's a law that 35 years after the release of a record so for those 35 years the record companies own the masters Ooh. you know the original recordings but after 35 years the bands have the rights to take mm. those masters back and do whatever they want with them mm. so the wishing chair turned 35 two years ago or last year um in my tribe is 35 years next year so we're going to own those masters now we have natalie has to agree because because of what our partnership was de was designed that um we you know we need to uh everyone needs to agree on what we're going to do with it so we're at the moment we're looking to get uh, a higher rate on streams um uh, a s thing called sync licenses that where your your music goes into um commercials and movies and tv and things like that you can get a better rate so we're actually in the process of negotiating with Warner Brothers, Warner Music Group, um, now trying to get a better rate or s s tell them, well, we're going to take our records and, you know, go somewhere else right. and yeah. try to force their hand. So we're, we're sort of right in the middle of that, you know, right now. Um, <clears throat> and, for, you know, we always, for the longest time, we held on to our publishing rights too. We, we pre preferred then just to let the, the the money from publishing come in slowly, you know, every year instead of taking a big lump sum of money and then not having that income for five years or ten years, depending on what the what the publishing deal was. Um, so we always had good advice, and I think our our record company Electra, I think for the most part they were a really good company to be with for us. Um, I liked a lot of the people that worked there. I think they really liked us and they enjoyed working for us because we weren't, you know, we were, we were nice people. You know, we didn't complain too much. You know, we, we didn't demand things. Um, we sort of trusted their advice. Um, and I, for, I think for the most part, we always got good advice. So, you know, um, I'm very happy where I am today and what we're doing and, you know, how we're playing and yeah. the music we, music we're making. And the, the other thing for me, you know, uh, I'm always want to talk to the people, take some picture with them, have autographs, CD, because I have a huge collection. And you guys do that. At least at the Bishmer, after the show is over, you go to the bar, you drink a cup of beer, people approach, you take some picture. You're very approachable. People like this stuff. Other you know, with the COVID, it was you know kind of a little bit difficult because people didn't want to get exposed. But other bands, they don't care. They don't want to take a picture. They don't want to sign an autograph. They go in the back door and they go to the hotel and you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. They leave. And they leave. You know. Um, I like doing that. You know, and I think Mary is very shy. She's not. Yeah, she really she like she doesn't like doing that. And our and our drummer Jerome, he's very shy too. He doesn't like to. He doesn't like the back slapping and the handshaking and the photographs, you know, things. But, um, you know, Dennis and Jeff and John and I, we, we enjoy it. You know, oh, we I do. mean, yeah. I, I, I like meeting you and I like our, our fans are they're fun and we, we become friends. And a lot of them are coming to Jamestown in May to see our homecoming show here in Jamestown. They're flying in from all over. And, yeah. and I'm going to I'm going to actually take them on. The morning of the concert, I'm going to take them on a little walkabout around downtown Jamestown and show them all the buildings that oh. we had rehearsal spaces in or bars that we played in. And we're just going to walk around and I'm tell some stories and, you know, we'll have a cup of coffee and um, yeah. have a few laughs, you know. I That's like true. that. I'm just yeah. And plus, at the same time, for a, a financial point of view, people will go back to the store and buy T-shirts, buy CDs and you yes. get pictures. So you can make a little bit of money. So... It's like a, it's like a business, you know, relationship. Well, it, oh yes, thank you. Picture, you know. It, well, exactly, um, and that's another but reason. Why I know that it. I noticed that Mary uh, is never coming out, and I, I think uh, somebody told me that 
a, a couple of times people confuse her, they call her Natalie or something, and she got pissed off. I don't know if it's true or not, but, you know, but of course we're meaning to that. Well, so. yes, we, we do, <laughs> we, we still do get that. Um, five years ago, we were playing at a bar in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and after the show, a woman came up to me. She was a little intoxicated, but she <laughs> said, she said to me, she said, I didn't know Natalie played the violin. And I said, she doesn't. She said, yes, she does. I said, no, I don't no. think she does. And she said, well, yeah, she was just playing it. I said, no, that's Mary Ramsey. And she said, it was not. I said, yes, that's Mary Ramsey. And she said, it's Natalie. And I said, okay, that's Natalie. See you later. <laughs> I, could, I could not convince her. Of course. And during the show, I say to the audience, oh, look who's back, Mary Ramsey. You know, uh, and it says, you know, just... For, I think, casual fans who use music as a background and don't really aren't as passionate about it as you are or John Lombardo, who, yeah. read the line, who read the liner notes, you know, and see who produced it and where it was made. And, you know, you like that, right? It's, it's important to, to music fans like you to know the information. And to the casual fan, they don't, they're not paying attention. So they just see the name. You know, oh, 10,000 maniacs. And we get it on social media all the time. 10,000 maniacs. Well, you're only nine, you know, you're only 900, 9,999 because Natalie's gone. Or, you know, no Natalie, no thanks. Or, you know, really? we get a lot of, yeah, we get a lot of distractors like that in, in Facebook posts all the time. And um, I, tr you know, because I do a lot of the social media and I, I'm the administrator of our Facebook page and, um, so I, I try to answer every question mm -hmm. and I, and I try to inject some humor into it and, um, uh, and not get angry, but, you know, we wouldn't be where we are without Natalie Merchant, but she wouldn't be where she is without, without you. us. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, um, we, you know, we were part of it. You know, we wrote a lot of the music, you know, the music to These Are Days, the music was written by Rob Buck. Um, and, and I sometimes I can't convince people of that. And I said, well, go read the record jacket. It says right there. Uh, um, so it, it can be frustrating, um, uh, but you know, it's, it's just, it is, that's what it is. You know, 40 years later, you guys, you know, 40th anniversary and still playing and Kicking around and traveling and uh, enjoying the music, enjoying your life. It's pretty good, man. It couldn't be that bad, right? If, if, if 40 years after that, people still, guys like myself and thousands of other people go and, and see you guys. I mean, the quality is there. The music is there. It's different. Some people have come, come and go. And, and still, for the most part, it's the same band, you know. I, well, we did, I liked we did two. I liked, yeah. yeah. Well, we did two really important things, I think, that made us... Um, better musicians which would make us a better band and one was we quit drinking before our shows so when we're on stage we're all sober really it took us a it took us a long time to to get to that point okay um uh, yeah really good it, we became a lot better and then the second thing we did was we invested quite a bit of money in in-ear monitors um so one to try to save what hearing we have left because uh, I, I suffer from terrible tinnitus. My ears ring constantly. I can hear them right now. It's loud and it's sometimes depressing. It's always annoying. Um, but, you know, I, I got a happy life. That's just a mild annoyance. But so we wanted to protect our hearing. And then it also... Um, when we play now, because of the, the you know, the inner monitors that we use, we can really hear each other. When you're on stage with amp, because we don't even have, you know, we don't have onstage amplifiers anymore. We don't use guitar amps or bass amps. It's, it's all direct right into the board, right to the front of the house. Um, so it's quiet on stage. All you're hearing is the drums. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're sitting at the Birchmere and you're in that front row and you're underneath the PA. Yeah. You hear a lot of drums and yeah. nothing else. Um, so 
it, it gave us the opportunity to really hear what each one of us was doing and to be musically together. You know, on stage with the wedges and the amplifiers, it's just loud. It's, it's really hard to, to really hear things well. And not only are you doing damage to your ears, you know, at this, if a stage decibel level is at, you know, 106 or 110 decibels, I mean, you're damaging your ears. And um, we've, I, I've spent a lot of time learning about that and talking to my audiologist and understanding what's going on. And um, so I could hear everything Jeff was playing, you know, on the other side of the stage. It sounds like he's right in my head, you know. And then the other part of that is, oh, my God, they can all hear what I'm playing. I better be damn good. That's right. <laughs> so it, it made us, it really made us strive to be better because, because of this new environment of being able to hear ourselves. Yeah. And playing sober. <laughs> Well, you drink after, Jeff, you go to the bar. Well, that's that's the reward for us, you know. That's when, right, when you know, you earn it, you know. You earn, you gotta yeah. earn drinks, yeah. you know, beer. Earn it, that's right. Yeah, you, you, what, do you, what do you prefer, Chilean, do you like wine or, or your beer type of wine, or both? Um, I like wine that tastes like vodka. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. I'm I from Chile, vodka. so I'm, uh, Chile is well no, known no. for uh, for uh, wine, so I will, I will For great you. wine, yeah, I, I like a, wine. A, a, a couple um, of bottles of good stuff. Um, see, you, I, see you next time. I, uh, absolutely, I'd, I'd love to try it. Um, no, I like wine, but um, I'm I like um, I'm a sort of I like vodka or scotch. Yeah, I like you know vodka and soda or scotch and soda. In in the winter, I drink scotch and soda. In the summer, I drink vodka sodas. That's, or, that's, or or you know I, I like a capirinha. I uh, make those at home. They're good. Oof. You know what? In Chile, they drink and and in Peru too, pisco sour. You know what I'm talking about? Have you ever no, tried that? What, what's it called? Uh, uh, Pisco, P-I-S-C-O, and then sour, S-O-U-R. No, yep. you cannot find the stuff. It's probably like a Capirinha, right? Because it's, that's... It's, it's very, a, I mean, for people, I, I, I'm a beer type of guy, so for people that like vodka and whiskey, they, they like the kind of stuff. I, I'm a, I did, I, when I was living in Chile, I didn't drink much. And when I came to the United States to study, I began hanging out with American kids. So we were, you know, drinking beer, <laughs> eating pizza, and chasing girls when I was in school, you know. But, of course. but that's another story. That's what you do. <laughs> that's what you do, you know. So, so. That's all you can afford. <laughs> that's what you are poor, you know. I, was, I did yeah. okay, and then I went to graduate school. I did okay. So i very, very fortunate that I was able to survive this country, and I became a U.S. citizen. I have all my life here. So I, looking back with... Uh, you know, that was the best decision for me. It's, uh, people don't know how good they have it here in the United States, you know. And, uh, yeah. Very proud to be a youth citizen. And people complain too much. That's what I said. Well, that's, you know, it's easy to complain. Yeah. You, know? you know, it's easy to complain about something because you don't have to do anything but open your mouth and mm -hmm. let buy Whether you like this press, you know, that press, you know, this or yeah. that. No. Still, you know, get a job, go to school, whatever. Well, yeah. uh, I'm I'm an average guy who was able to make it. I'm I'm I'm, I'm the American dream alive, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, America's yeah. better for it because you're here. Well, you know, well, the pre the former president didn't believe that, and he was kicking out all the immigrants and uh, kind of crazy, you know. And uh, hopefully, you know, the war on Ukraine will be over. That's very. Uh, I saw this stuff and Putin and. And we, we live in crazy world. Why people cannot live in peace? Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know. It's, uh, I think um, well, one of our biggest enemies in, in the world is greed. Yeah. People, are gr people are greedy. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and greed now is very popular. You know, there are more billionaires in the world now than... I mean, I don't know, you can't even count how many there are. And, and I, I've got nothing against someone making a billion dollars, but who needs that much money? You can't yeah. spend it. That's right, yeah. You know, it's like they're hoarding, they're hoarders. They hoard money. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, instead of hoarding books or, you know, or magazines, they hoard money. And, well, you know, good, you know, fine, but... There, there are people who 
not of their own fault, are starving. Mm. You know, this war is really going to make starvation is going to be a real problem coming up. The, you know, supply chains being broken and, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to be all right. Um, but there's a, a lot of people in the world who aren't and they're going to start. Um, you know, the United States and other European countries are putting a lot of economic pressure on Russia and people in Russia, the common and the average Joe that had nothing to do with the world, whether they like or not, put it, yeah. it's going to be starving. It is right now. The economy in, 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 uh, in Russia has collapsed and there are, you know, these crazy guys running the country and they're all killing their own Russian people in Ukraine and, you know, Ukraine have nothing to do with that. And it's, it's a mess. I will, you know, yeah. it's crazy. It's man. very sad. It's very sad. Hey, my friend, it was very nice talking to you, man. And uh, we'll get you some Chilean wine. I will see you at the, at the Bishmer in a couple of weeks. And do you have we'll, we'll talk some more, man. Yeah, I'll put Bring you on the guest it. list. Huh? I'll put you on the guest list. Thank you very much, man. Yeah. And I need to get a, a CD. Well, I have uh, several CDs signed by me, but I, I need to talk to Mary to sign the stuff because it's important to me. I, I want to, I, you know, some people download the stuff and uh, download PDF. No, for me, I like the real thing. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. I buy vinyl because I'm, I'm helping the band. I buy CDs. I buy T-shirts. I want to get an autograph CD by everybody because I want to contribute uh -huh. to the band as well to make a little bit of money. And, you know, so... Well, I need to, but, and Mary never, you know, comes in to... Well, you know what? We'll make it happen. I'll, we'll uh, make it. We'll, we'll get you, I'll get you back in the dressing room so you can have a conversation with her. That would be, uh, she, she's unbelievable. She's a, I mean, she's a very good singer, uh, but she's a um, very good musician. I mean, the way she yeah. plays the violin mean, is, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, I don't play any instrument. I don't know how to read music at all, but I've been listening to music, f you know, 40 hours, four hours a day for the last 50 years. So I know a lot of her music, which is a very well, good musician. She is very good, and that's uh, you know a great thing that she brought to this band is a is a lead n another lead instrument, yeah. And okay. she can play circles around us. She's re she's really good at what she does. But she has got a very good personality and very outgoing. She talks. She makes jokes. People like that kind of stuff, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Other musicians. I, mean, very... I think um, I think maybe a lot of musicians are shy, but when they get on stage. You know, an, another personality might come out, but when they're off right. stage, they're yeah. a different person. That's right. I'm the same person. <laughs> the guy you see on stage is the guy you see walking down the street. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so uh, let me tell you a quick joke. Yeah. When my son was little, yeah, he said to me, Daddy, I want to grow up and be a musician. And my wife said to him, son, you can't do both. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. You can People either grow do what up or you can do. be a musician. That's right. People, um, <laughs> people got to fulfill the dream, do what they like. I mean, in my case, uh, I knew that I couldn't play music. I, I knew that I have an expensive taste and buying music, going to concert. And I, I thought, you know, I need to, I need to study engineer that I mean it, it, go to university that will help me to get a better job and pay the bills and went to graduate school and I and and I, and I did okay man I'm, I'm very fortunate you know to have a well-paid job in the day and and then yeah. do the stuff and during the evening and buy music and go on gigs and buying CDs t-shirt whatever and uh, I'm, I'm a very fortunate so the as I mentioned before this country has been very good to me and my family so I cannot complain and this is there isn't another America in any galaxy, in any, yeah. you know, whatever is up there, man, you know, any Twilight Zone, you know, it's only America, it's only <laughs> one United States of America. So people that were born in, in here in this country, they, they need to earn it, man. They need to, like I did, and uh, they need to work hard, and then there's plenty of money for everybody, plenty of, it's a million dollars for everybody. You need to figure out how you get your, you know, your chunk out of the, the sky and, and do well for yourself, for your family, whatever, you know. I enjoy well, you. Well, I, I think um, my wife is a teacher. She teaches um, eight-year-olds, third grade. Yeah. And, uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> and um, a lot of her students um, live in poverty. Mm -hmm. And um, they fall behind in school. Yeah. 
it, and it's hard to catch up when she's got, you know, 20, 25 students in a room and she's a very good teacher. Her, her, her kids love her yeah. because she loves them. Um, but some of these kids are just not going to have a, a, get a, a good education because they need more help than just what one teacher can do. And I think educating people um, is, you know, it, paying for it now, making mm -hmm. sure that children get a good education, you don't pay for it later. That's you know, right. Because yeah. because when you're educated, you're making smart choices and, and you're a nicer person for the most part. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, then you, when you're educated, um, you have more opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. Available. And, um, and then, and then that leads to, you know, networking with other educated people. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it, it's easier. It's certainly, yeah. um, uh, I think what would be a good investment that uh, America make it, could make, you know, for its citizens is get the kids educated. Start early, you know, but. Uh, they have good role models, you know, some, some kids, yes. unfortunately, they don't have both parts of the home and the mom that's to right. work and get yep. another part-time job and the kids are starting playing with computers and stay all night long. They don't do the homework because there's nobody at home telling them that school is important, read books, and that they, they, it's, it's crazy, you know. It, you, unfortunately, you, many broken families, you know. You are talking about her students, and that's exactly what she has. She has, a, there's a lot of single parents or grandparents a lot of kids that are do not have any um, parameters set for them. They there's no one watching out for them or making sure they're doing their homework. You know, you, parents need to help. You know, the kids can't do it on their own at home, and if there's yeah. no supervision. Like you said, she had a, this one poor kid. His father was shot to death. And his mother's a drug addict. He's living with his grandmother and she can't take care of him. And he stays up all night playing Fortnite computer games. These just wild, you know, these just crazy games that stimulate his brain so much. When he comes to school in the morning, he's tired. And opening a book and reading it is just boring because his brain's been so stimulated from all this, you know, this comp computer games and stuff. And he, he was just, Oh, it's it's so sad. He's very sad, man. Yeah, kid. He's going to end up, you know, on drugs, in jail, or dead. Probably by the time he's eighteen. Yeah, well, yeah. it's terrible, man. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, so I, I for me, I I got lucky on the way, man. I'm not smarter than anybody else. I got, I knew there was school. It was important, and uh, and I got a bunch of degrees, and still taking classes, and I have done well in my life. So. I have a, in, I, I have a, a lot of motivation in my life. I mean, I'm 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 not smarter than anybody else. I'm not that I, I I'm goal oriented and I have a lot of motivation. Although I'm I'm old guy like too, but um, but still I have inside me I have a energy. You know, I have still the yeah. the energy, the enthusiasm. Uh, you know to do a lot more. I wish I wish I had 40, 50 hours in the day to do a lot more. I mean, it's not, you know, I have a lot of goals. My life, you know? Yeah. Good for you. I'm like that as well. I'm very motivated to do stuff. Yeah, Sometimes, that's, you know, if you don't do it, like, nobody will do it for you, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, uh, I like to stay active, you know, I don't, I try to eat right when I can and, uh, and, uh, and I'd like to laugh a lot. You know, yeah. and I'm surrounded by really good friends. I'm really <laughs> lucky that the life I've had, the parents, I had really good parents who were loving. You know, I had good, my, my siblings were great. Um, you know. And the other thing is important, do, do the right thing in life and help people out. I mean, yes. you know, if you're a billionaire or billionaire, what's the point of having a hundred house or a hundred car? No, make enough for yourself and for your kids, but give them anyway. Do the right thing in life and help people out. And you know that's uh, it's nothing wrong with making money. It just is something wrong with, and that is the only thing you do. Yeah. So I, I agree with you completely. Back to 
school or community or hospital or whatever, whatever it is. You know, you're, you're not a, yeah. you're a helper. I, I have done a lot that in my life, and in a way, I get energy back, and now uh, I'm, you know, been fortunate to do other stuff because. I tried to do the right thing in life, I suppose. We were uh, we were just in Austin, Texas, and uh, after the show, we were uh, hanging out by the bus, and uh, a homeless guy was walking by. So I just said hello, and he sort of said hello, and uh, I gave him a sandwich, and uh, we started talking. And he was from Jordan, a computer programmer. Wow. Came to America, lost his job. So I didn't, you know, he was, I think, definitely had struggling with mental illness, you know, but he, you know, we had a nice long conversation and I gave him, you know, I had $50 in my pocket. So I gave him that. And uh, we had a really nice, really nice talk. And, uh, you know, I said, so where do you sleep? He said, outside. I, just, I said, no, where? He said, well, you know, you got to keep moving around. Uh, and he could, you knew, the, I could tell that he was a smart man. You know, he must have been uh, hard to tell, but maybe 30. Very young, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was very scruffy. It's, you know, he hadn't shaved in I don't know how many years and, you know, in dirty clothes. And, uh, but behind it, you know, there was a real person. Yeah. You know, that was smart and you could tell he was passionate about things, but he just, for whatever reason, um, you know, he'd lost his place. Yeah, yeah they got to be opportunity for everybody, man. This, um, you know, everybody needs a second chance or a third chance or whatever, you know, as long as you're not doing stupid stuff or doing drugs. Right. Yeah. You know, not pay your taxes or whatever it is, and uh, yeah. everybody has a second opportunity man, with life, in marriage, in music, in life, whatever it is, man. Yeah. You know, everybody goes to downturn, but you know, yeah. I gotta make it happen. Man. Go to church if you believe in church, or yep. do the right thing, and think, good thing will happen to you. Man. That's what I, wherever you can find strength, you know. You know, I right. get I get it from my family and friends. For you, man. Yeah. Hey, Stephen. Was Stephen was very nice talking to you, man. I will see you in a couple of weeks, and. Don't forget to put me in the in the in the, on list. the guest list. In do the you guest will list. you do you come alone or do you will you bring a guest with you? Uh, I I may go with uh, with my son that they very lucky. Yeah, I will. Okay, he like the music. Put you, I'll put you down plus one. B U S T A M A N T E. And you have my email address. With you you know. I will. All right. And I will send you a link for the recording after this. Thank you. It was very nice talking to you. Steven, uh, you're a you're a smart guy, man. And I need to talk to John. I didn't know he he had a a, a, a huge music collection, man. I need to talk to him. Man. Oh, he's he's. I need to see incredible. His. You know, when we travel, he would in the old days he'd bring a box of his records and go to record stores and trade. You know, really? get other stuff. Yeah, yeah. He, he 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 had an incredible collection. Yeah. Well, you know what? I consider you a friend. So, my friend, I will see you at the Birchmere. You will, man. Thank you very much. You're a, you're a good guy, man. Yeah, thank you. You too. Take it easy, man. Thank you all to your okay. family, and I will see you very soon, man. Okay. Bye bye. Take it easy. Thank you.